Hi, my name is Douglas Baldwin, and I wrote the cookbook Sous Vide for the Home Cook. I also wrote a web guide called Practical Guide Sous Vide Cooking. Today I'm going to show you how I cook scallops. Most of the time I would vacuum seal them in my chamber vacuum sealer or using a clamp style vacuum sealer like the Food Saver, but I thought instead I'd show you the Ziploc water displacement method. So in the other two methods, I just drop the scallops in the bag, make sure they're well separated, and vacuum seal them until I start to see the uh, corners get compressed with the chamber, um, with the clamp style vacuum sealer. Or with the chamber vacuum sealer, I usually do about a 95% uh, vacuum setting. Uh, but when you're using the water displacement method, you need something in the bag to be around the scallops so that the air can be displaced more easily. And today I'm going to use a slightly flavored liquid. Uh, here I have about three quarters of a cup of water. I'm going to add some cider vinegar. You could use whatever vinegar you like. And then a little bit of salt for flavoring. And then I'm going to stir this up until most of the salt is dissolved. And this is just going to provide a little bit of subtle flavor to the scallops as they cook. Here I have uh, nine beautiful diver caught scallops from my local fishmonger. As with all cooking, and especially with sous vide cooking, the quality of the ingredient really shines through in your final product. So good food in will give you great food out. Uh, when you get your fish, uh, whether it be uh, scallops or salmon or anything else from your fish purveyor, it's always good to have them pack it in ice. Keeping them ice will keep them much fresher in your refrigerator than just the refrigerator alone. I have three Ziploc bags and I'm going to pour in about a third of the liquid. And then I'm going to place three of the scallops in my liquid. Uh, when you're vacuum sealing, you need to be very careful on the placement so that they're not overlapped or uh, touching so that they don't cook together. But with a Ziploc bag, it's much easier to control. So I place the bottom of the bag under the water and I try and feed the bag under the water so that it's all under the surface. And I start sealing the Ziploc bag at one corner and then I feed it under the surface of the water. And as you can see, there's very little air left in the pouch. And when I drop them in the water bath, I'll just make sure I've uh, separated them a little bit. So now I'll go ahead and package the other two. So now that I've sealed the scallops in my Ziploc bags, I'm going to put them in my water bath. I've chosen 140 degrees Fahrenheit, 60 degrees Celsius, for my water bath because I want to pasteurize my uh, fish. Uh, a lot of people will consider this overcooked. A lot of people prefer 122 degrees Fahrenheit for scallops or even 108 degrees Fahrenheit for scallops. Now neither of these t those temperatures, either the 108 or the 122 Fahrenheit, will reduce any uh, pathogens or other uh, uh, bacteria in with the scallops that could make you sick. So I think it's much more important to have a little bit firmer texture of my scallops, which I've always liked anyway, and have them be safe by pasteurizing them. There's a little debate in the scientific community about what pathogens to worry about when cooking fish. Uh, I shoot for listeria and I have times computed in my guide so you can just look up uh, the fish and uh, it'll tell you how long to cook it. So at 140 degrees Fahrenheit, I'm going to cook my scallops for 30 to 40 minutes. And I'm going to just place them in my water bath, making sure that they're completely submerged under the water and well separated. And then I'll see you back in 30 to 40 minutes. Hello and welcome back. So I've cooked my scallops for 30 to 40 minutes in my 140 degree Fahrenheit or 60 degrees Celsius water bath. I've done this to try and make them safe. Uh, shellfish such as uh, uh, oysters and these can have other pathogens such as viruses like the Norwalk-like virus or norovirus that won't be destroyed by this temperature. So if you know that you're immune compromised or at high risk, then it's best not to have shellfish. Uh, for other fish that's less likely to have that uh, than pasteurizing as I have 
for a six decimal reduction in listeria, which is listed very clearly in my cookbook, is probably the best path to do. Uh, I'm going to take them out of the water bath and I'm going to uh, drain the liquid off uh, that's in the bag into the sink. You'll notice that there's a little bit of what looks like air in here. A little bit of this is expanded air, but a lot of it is also water va vapor from the liquid evaporating and so a lot more of this is steam than air. I'll be right back. So I've drained off the liquid from the uh, Ziploc bags and I've laid my scallops on paper towels. And I'm uh, going to pat them dry with a paper towel so that I remove most of the moisture from the surface that I'm going to sear in my hot pan. Because if I don't, the water that's on the surface will turn to steam and will prevent uh, the scallops from browning quickly. And if they're not browned quickly, then they'll overcook the interior of the scallop, which we've carefully cooked sous vide so that it is nice and firm, but still moist and tender. So I've started heating my pan. I put just enough vegetable oil to cover the bottom of the pan. You can use any high smoke point oil. I'm heating up to its highest setting, and once I start to see smoke coming off the pan, which you may be able to see now, now that the oil is smoking hot, I'm going to place the scallops in the pan, and I'll wait about 15 to 20 seconds on one side. Uh, in the restaurant kitchen, you wouldn't necessarily use a splatter guard, but in the home kitchen, it can be quite nice. You can see as I flip them over that they have a nice, golden brown finish. Okay, so now I've finished uh, searing my scallops in a smoking hot pan until they are golden brown. You may recall that I cooked them at 140 degrees Fahrenheit until they are pasteurized and made safe. Other people prefer them cooked at a lower temperature instead of giving the firm texture that I like for scallops. The problem with lower temperatures is that they can't be pasteurized at those temperatures. Uh, so Keep that in mind if you're choosing those temperatures to cook at. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me.